today's, uh, as you see from the minutes, today's plenary talk uh, will be by Dr. Anna Conesa, a research professor at the Institute for Integrative Systems Biology in Valencia, Spain, who will be briefly introduced by Alice. Yeah, sorry, today you are, <laughs> you have to listen to me a lot. Um, so yeah, um, Anna was um, suggested by the annotation committee by uh, Alice Dennis. And actually, so Anna is, um, is uh, her lab is interested in uh, understanding functional aspect of gene expression at the genome-wide level. Her group developed statistical methods and software tools to analyze the dynamic aspect of transcriptomes. Uh, maybe some of the popular tools that you might know is uh, that she, she developed is like Blast2Go, Paintomix, Maxic Pro, NoSeq, Qualimap, Scanty, Tapas, and so on. So she is a quite productive uh, researcher with many papers. She led multiple European projects to develop methods for the analysis of transcriptome. And uh, recently, she has a focus on the use of long read sequencing to characterize transcriptome complexity. And so we are really happy to host her today um, to learn more about um, isoform identification and genome annotation using long read transcriptomics. So I will leave you with Anna, and we will have then a Q&A session. Uh, if you don't want to ask question afterwards, please drop question in the chat and we will just uh, uh, follow up on that too. So I will leave Anna starts. Okay, thank you Alice for the, for the nice introduction. Um, and well, thank you to everyone for inviting me to be here today. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and I hope that it goes well because I had some technical problems with the computer. So let me see. We can see your screen. Yes, and now it should come up on uh, presenter mode. Yes? Yeah, perfect. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, I will be talking about uh, the work that we have doing in the lab on the assessment of long reach transcriptomics data uh, to study isoforms and also uh, to, to do some genome annotation that we have been doing in the, in the last uh, year. Um, you know that, uh, probably you know that uh, uh, long reach sequencing was the, the, the method of the year, 2022, uh, by, by Nature Methods. And of course, that was really great for us because we have been working on this uh, almost for 10 years now. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, well, the aspect in which I have been involved is the analysis of the transcriptomes using this data. And you know that advantages is basically that uh, it can resolve the continuity of uh, alternative isoforms uh, uh, because the long reads do not need an assembly step uh, and uh, short reads do. So in principle, you get one read, one transcript model, and one, one transcript representation. However, uh, the reality is not as, as clear as it seems. Uh, here you have a representation of uh, um, long reads uh, data obtained from different uh, technologies from the long, uh, long and gas project. I will talk about this in, in a minute, but basically showing the diversity of uh, transcript models that can be sequenced from one particular gene. So here you have, let me see, here you have, here, right? So the genome annotation of uh, this gene uh, in gene code, so there are like six different isoforms. And then on red, you have the diversity of uh, isoforms that you can find with the long reads methods. So clearly a lot, a lot of different uh, uh, possibilities are seen here. And the question of course is, uh, are all these uh, uh, structures, all these sequences real or not? So this is the question that uh, we were trying to, to answer. So. Was clear the necessity of a benchmark because you know we have uh, the uh, technologies that have not been sufficiently tested yet. There are also different level of preparation methods, uh, not just one like uh, with Illumina. There are different also uh, technologies, platforms, uh, new analysis approaches are emerging, and especially there is an increasing number of papers uh, claiming uh, thousands of novel isoforms with these methods. So we thought that uh, it was important to to bring in some clarity here. 
So uh, with that, we uh, launched the uh, longer gas uh, challenge, which basically we want to evaluate uh, along with Cybernetic methods for the analysis of uh, for the analysis of the transcriptome. So what we did here was to collect a number of samples from uh, three different species: human, mouse, and the manatee. The manatee was for uh, uh, the, the possibility of studying these methods on a non-model organism uh, fully characterized. Uh, we generated different type of samples, cell lines, mixture of cell lines. Uh, we also had uh, spikings, the syrups, which are uh, a mixture of uh, synthetic transcripts in which uh, isoforms have been simulated, and also computationally uh, synthetic data. As I mentioned before, different library protocols, the usual protocol is cDNA. Uh, but of course, also with nanopore, you have direct RNA sequencing. There are some other methods like R2C2, uh, in which uh, this is also a protocol for nanopore, in which you create some kind of circular structure that resembles a little bit what uh, PacBio does, but is uh, for nanopore sequencing. And then you have the capture methods in which basically the capture of the transcripts is uh, from the five prime end instead of the amplification from the uh, three prime end as is done with cDNA. And as mentioned before, the pack by equal to. Oh, any questions? Uh, so we do we did pack by equal to mean ion uh, for nanopore, and then of course also ion. Okay, so the project has three challenges. Uh, challenge one is on the identification of transcripts, sample specific trans transcripts, I must say, uh, using a high quality genome. Therefore, we have the human and mouse samples. Challenge two was about transcript uh, isoform quantification with its methods. And then uh, the challenge three was for the novel transcript isoform identification, you know, when you don't have a good uh, reference annotation. Of even genome. Uh, I will talk uh, here about challenge one uh, and three, uh, and then a little bit more about uh, some extra work in, in my lab. Um, so, uh, about challenge one is, uh, as I mentioned, transcript isoform detection with a high quality genome. We had the human and mouse data, different samples, the H1 mix, and the synthetic data for that. Here is uh, to give you an overview of the data. Uh, so what we have here are the reads uh, that we obtain with the different the six different combinations of uh, library preparations and sequencing platform. You can see that uh, in general, uh, the cDNA pack by your reads are longer, right? Followed by R2C2 with nanopore and the other methods produce shorter reads. Okay, so that's uh, one fact, just the data. Also here you can see the number of reads, the sequencing depth, and then here you can see that uh, the cDNA with nanopore and also the cap trap version of the of the nanopore gave a high, much higher number of reads than the rest of the uh, technologies, right? But this is somehow is not specifically related to the quality of, of the identity in this case of the reads with respect to the genome. In this case, the cDNA pack bio and the R2C2, the one with the longest reads, were given us the, the highest identity. So there are already some differences in the quality of the starting material. Um, so just to give you an idea of the magnitude, the magnitude of the challenge, we have these six combinations of library preparation and sequencing protocols of sequencing platforms. Uh, for the hum for for the challenge one, we have three different type of samples: one to human and one mouse. Uh, we provided to the community two analysis options, just only using the the long reads of a combination with the with the short and, and, and long reads. That's created thirty six different uh, uh, analysis possibilities. So we launch the data to the community and ask people to submit their predictions using their tools. So a total of here you have, uh, I think it was 11 in total, also with the other challenges, uh, uh, tools participated in, in this project. And I have uh, divided them here a little bit, uh, uh, depending on how they use the reference annotation to remember this is challenge one. So we have a number of tools here in orange that really use a lot of uh, the reference annotation to correct the transcript predictions. Then some others like Spectra, Talon, Mandalorian, ISO tools who somehow are using this as uh, 
support, but not so much heavily uh, as, as, a, as a source of information. And then we have one tool, Lyric, in which actually is not using the reference annotation in the first place. Um, I will be talking about pipelines. That means that this is a combination of library preparation, sequencing platform, and analysis tool, right? Uh, and we will have for challenge uh, one, I think a total of 47 different pipelines in three different data sets. Uh, for evaluation, we were using SCANTI, and I will talk about this, uh, gene code manual curation of a number of loci and also some uh, experimental validations. So the SCANTI framework was very heavily used in this project. Basically, SCANTI was a tool developed by my lab in which we defined the transcript models obtained from uh, long reads uh, by their comparison to the reference transcriptome. And there we define the fully spliced matches. Uh, that means that all the splice junctions are matching one, at least one reference transcript. Uh, the incomplete spliced matches is when you are missing some uh, junctions, either at the beginning of the end of the transcript. Novel in catalogs, you will hear a lot about this, is a category in which we have novel combinations of existing donor or acceptor sites, like a novel splicing events. Uh, the novel not in catalog is when we have actually a novel uh, expression, uh, a novel, sorry, uh, donor or acceptor site, right? So it's completely novel site. And then some other categories like uh, genic or fantasies or intergenic. We also have some supplementary data uh, on the same samples. We obtain Illumina, uh, CAGE, and Quantic for the detection of the, of the five and the three primates. Okay, um, right. So using this, uh, what we uh, study was uh, uh, different aspects. So here you have a representation of the percentages of different types of scanty categories, the full space matches and the incomplete space matches. The, the distribution uh, of the different tools are here represented by their uh, um, uh, their letters, and then the colors represent the different types of uh, library preparation and sequencing methods. Um, and so there are a number of things that you can see when you when you study this uh, this plot. First is that there is a number of tools here uh, that has a high number of full uh, splice matches, and and these are consistently the same tools like Bamboo, uh, uh, Isoquan. They have a lot of full splice matches, very little number of incompletes, right? So they are really having the transcripts that are in their reference, and also the same tools have little novelty, so have low levels of here, uh, let me see, novel in catalogs of novel not in catalogs, the same tools, regardless of the data, right? The, the type of library preparation. Then you have another set of tools that are kind of more, more broad in their diversity of uh, uh, transcript types, um, in which you have a different combination of full space matches that represent the reference, incompletes, right? And also the novel uh, aspects of the data, right? And then finally, uh, so these are the other type of tools that are somehow being guided by the reference, but not using this as a, such a strong support. And then the lyric method was very interesting because this was the method in which we have the highest number, for example, of novel nodding catalog. So it was able to detect more knowledge. So if we look, however, to, um, sorry, um how these methods are supported by the orthogonal data at the five of three primates or correspond to uh you know the support by the reference uh we also see very interesting results here uh for example those tools remember that are heavily based on the reference like bamboo and isoquan a little bit uh, uh, flare and flames uh, but especially these two isoquan and bamboo they actually have models in, that are very nicely supported by the reference, but actually not as well supported by the orthogonal experimental data, right? So indicating that they are using this annotation information to call their uh, transcript models. However, the other tools, right, that are not as good representing the reference actually tend to have higher level of orthogonal support, somehow reflecting that this, you know, uh, novelty in the transcriptome is present and the tools that are not really only looking at the reference are able to predict correctly which will be the transcript uh, uh, ends. Um, 
So this is kind of uh, indicating the differences between the methodologies. Oh, and here you have a, a lyric that is again somewhere in, a, in, in, in those positions in the middle, right? So the tools that use the reference annotation are better supported by the annotation, of course, than by the experimental data, which is interesting. Um, here we compared actually the number of um, uh, the, the overlap that we have uh, in the different pipelines. So remember I mentioned that we have 47 different pipelines when we do the combination of uh, library preparation, uh, sequencing protocol and analysis pipeline. And you have these represented by scanty categories here and then the number here in the, in the upper part of the, of, the, of the bar plot in log scale, right? So what you can see very, very uh, easily here is that, see my cursor, is that those transcripts that are identified by few pipelines, right, tend to be highly enriched and novel transcripts. And only those that are detected by a consistent number of pipelines, those are the reference transcripts. So the transcripts that are already annotated. But also you can see that the number is much, much, much lower. So at the end, we have really very few, just a few of transcripts that were detected by all combinations of approaches, right? So um, that's interesting. So there is actually, that what it means is that there is a, 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 a great deal of uh, disagreement between the methodologies. Um, this is uh, the same kind of analysis, but a little bit different. This time we, uh, dif we made a difference between the the, let's say the, the actual data, so the combination of uh, library preparation and sequencing platform, because it's a different data set in each case, and how this is uh, agreed by the different uh, tools. And what you have here is a little bit a different way of representing the same concepts. Uh, you have the number of transcripts detected by an increasing number of tools, right? Like uh, well, one tool and some other tools. In this case, it's uh, the bamboo tool and other tool, right? So when you have, for example, two, it means that was detected by that tool, bamboo, and three other uh, methods, right? The same data. So what you can see here is also very interesting is that when we look at, for example, uh, the cDNA pack bio pipeline of the cDNA pack bio data, um, there is somehow uh, a number of transcripts uh, uh, of the full splice match category, the blue ones, that are consistently detected by everybody and high amounts, right? But also these of novel uh, categories like the fullest, like incompletes, novel in catalog and novel not in catalog. These are all transcripts of known genes, right? Oh, sorry. However, let me see. However, when you look at these other transcripts that tend to be like a more uh, intergenic of antisense, right? So the, uh, there is a general uh, uh, stronger lack of agreement, right? This is not exactly the same pattern for every tool, for example, or for every uh, type of data. For example, if we look at cDNA with nanopore of direct RNA with nanopore, actually the strong agreement is only on the full splice match. And there's a very little, I mean, as, as, as soon as you get like three, four tools, there are no transcripts that were detected by all of them when looking at these novel transcripts, right? So again, it seems that only in the full space matches is where we have the really the strong agreement, which is what is already in the reference. Uh, and just to give you, you know, a set of consistently detected uh, a transcript of unique junction chains of a unique intron change, it's represented here. Um, when we look at those that have been detected by at least three experimental methods and at least three uh, um, um, by informatics uh, approaches, we have a, a really huge increase of uh, the reference, the full space matches, but very interestingly, there is a small amount, but it's still a significant amount of uh, novelty, right? And I think it's very interesting to see that the, the, the novelty in which we have the highest agreement is the novel in catalog. So that means really that we are seeing here different uh, novel combinations of existing building blocks, right? Existing actions, existing uh, uh, junction sites, right? So it seems that there is a lot of, if this is human and mouse, there is a, a lot of uh, novelty to be detected on alternative uh, combinations of, uh, of, uh, of exon works, basically. 
Um, this is just to give you a little bit of an idea of other characteristics of the data. Uh, here we have the length, number of exons, and expression levels uh, of the transcript detected, in this case, by uh, nanopore and PAC bio, or both. And again, what you can see here is that uh, the uh, transcripts that were detected by PAC bio and uh, or both, and the PAC bio nanopore, tend to be longer and have higher a number of exons, but also were detected at lower uh, expression levels. And that's the same when we also look at the, uh, at the aspect of the library preparation. Um, uh, again, here, the, the library preps that captured the longest or more exons transcripts were uh, uh, those with uh, cDNA and R2C2. Okay, so this uh, methodology seems to be, in at least in our benchmark, uh, given the, the most complete sorry, transcripts. Um, okay, so this is here, we are not using our ground truths, we are just comparing, but we also have some kind of some different types of ground truths. And this is, uh, this is a very interesting result because you see all the discrepancy, right? However, when you look in this case, for example, to the spikings, uh, the strips that were the synthetic transcripts, we actually see that most, the, the great majority of the tools have really very great sensitivity and precision, almost regardless of the data was Lyric and Talon that had uh, power performance with some of the methods, but in general, we really have very high uh, perform performance metrics. I have to say that the, the SIRP, so the actual structure of the transcripts were known to the submitters, so this, this information could be used to, to do the prediction, which is actually what happens. Um, but that gives you a little bit an idea of how the methods uh, uh, differ or are similar to each other. So this is what you get with the search. So we have also this other uh, way of looking at the data that was uh, using simulated data. And we simulated uh, PAC bio and uh, nanopore cDNA reads. And what we did here is to simulate a number of uh, transcripts that were unknown. So they were known to the submitter. So we generated novelty. And we obtained values for sensitivity, uh, sensitivity, you know, for the higher expression levels, precision of the uh, of the known transcripts. This is indicated here, right? Precision of the known transcripts, and but also uh, of the novel transcripts are represented here. So what you can see here already is that actually uh, for the known transcripts, it's uh, all the tools perform well. And this is what we see also with the series. But however, it's more challenging to detect uh, uh, novel transcripts with high uh, precision in most of the cases. So uh, for example, if I can give you uh, an example, uh, Spectra will uh, have difficulties with the precision, also ISO IV, ISO quant less, but uh, most of them have problem with precision uh, when uh, uh, calling new transcripts. Um, okay. Uh, here, what we are not simulating are the uh, library preparation errors, only the sequencing errors, so there are also some limitations here. Uh, this is another type of validation. In this case, what we do is to ask uh, gene code curators to provide an assessment of the accuration of the data. So we took 50 loci and asked them, give me the right transcript models using the long reads data, but also all sorts of orthogonal data that they use normally in their annotation efforts. Uh, and again, ask uh, what is the performance of our tools uh, uh, against this set of uh, manually curated, uh, of manually annotated transcripts. And what we see here again is that although, you know, performance metrics are kind of okay in terms of precision for non-transcripts, Really, there was, for most cases, uh, a completely failure of sensitivity in the detection of the transcripts uh, that were created by, by gene code. So that was a very surprising result. And then um, uh, there was a situation here in which uh, this low side that we evaluated has usually a few number of novel transcripts, and these were not uh, identified by most of the tools. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, and then we went and did the experimental validation of a number of these transcripts, and here the results were uh, again really striking. 
So generally what we found is that we, we, we kind of validated a lot of things like uh, transcripts that were known, novels, known by one technology, by another technology, whether they were novel in catalog, novel not in catalog, and this is just a summary. But basically we actually validated quite a lot of uh, the transcripts that were uh, predicted, uh, also uh, a lot of the novel in catalog uh, transcripts, like uh, we had something like 90% uh, validation rate for the novel, not in catalog, uh, the novel in catalog transcripts that were also pipeline rare. Um, it was more difficult to validate the novel not in catalog, so we have a kind of 50% validation rate. And one thing that we, we, we found is that uh, generally those that were not validated were uh, transcripts that were predicted with uh, maybe one read or two, right? But still some of them were, right? So it's, it seems that there is a lot of transcript molecules that are there in our samples, right? That maybe they are not highly replicated, but actually when you go and try to amplify them, you actually find these uh, transcript structures. So to summarize with that part, uh, I can say that, you know, the long uh, sequencing can help you to identify transcripts, right? Uh, but actually what we find is that uh, the results uh, depend sometimes more of the algorithm that actually the long reads data is because many tools use the long reads as evidence to call reference transcripts in this challenge. So that, that's what is happening here, right? Globally, we found that cDNA with PacBio and uh, Nanopore with uh, R2C2 with given the best results. Here you have a number of tools that probably perform better in this recovery of annotating transcripts. However, the discovery of, of novel transcripts really, uh, we think that is very challenging, at least in, in this benchmark. And surprisingly, we, although it's challenging to find, they are actually in the sample because we validated many of them. We amplify them by PCR. I think also it's important to, to indicate the, the, the necessity of doing an extensive benchmark with many different ways of looking at the data to really understand what is going on. Um, I will give now some time, uh, some uh, uh, words about challenge three in which we were uh, asking the tools not to use the reference. And here we have the mouse and the manatee data. Only the cDNA was, uh, was uh, uh, analyzed here. Um, only four tools participated in this challenge, so we don't have an extensive diversity of tools as before, and you can see already here the difference in the, sorry, in the number of transcripts that were detected, that it's really huge between RNA Bloom, for example, and Isoquan, but also in the distribution of uh, scanty categories in which you don't have as many as blue as before, right? So we, there are many novel transcripts identified here. It's interesting that two of these tools, uh, uh, Bamboo and, um, and Isoquant performed in both challenge one and two. So the only difference is that they use or not use the reference as guidance. And you can see the differences in the results that were significant. For example, right? When you use the reference, you get reference transcripts. And when you don't use the reference, there is a lot of novelty that you detect of incomplete transcripts, as you can see here. Right, so it's it's really like uh, the reference is is very much used in, in these methodologies to do the accurate calls. Um, here again, some some values of support by Cage and Quantic. You can see that Bamboo in general is well supported by Cage, but the numbers are not really like super high. We are talking about here sixty percent. I saw one is around twenty percent, and some other methods were performing even worse. And the Quantsec support were kind of uh, similar at the um, three prime end. The presence of non-canonical junctions is also interesting to see. Some methods like RNA space did not filter out at all by that. And Bamboo and Isopod were giving us the, the, those junctions that are best supported by the Illumina data. Uh, here again, we can see, uh, we can calculate precision and sensitivity of the SIRPs that we know which transcripts are uh, there, uh, but in this case, predicting without using the reference, and you see here that the results are very different from what we saw uh, previously, right? So we have a high fault discovery rate in general. Uh, also, in, in some cases, for example, in bamboo, the, the sensitivity and the positive detection rates was, was low, right? 
So the reference is really being important. And just this is to compare the same tools, analyzing the same data, using or not using the reference, give very, very different performance uh, metrics. So the conclusion of challenge three is that really annotating without a reference is very challenging, at least for the methods that we tested in this challenge. Uh, and uh, usually you have a poor balance between sensitivity and prediction. Some tools like uh, Bamboo and Isoquant, you don't have poor sensitivity, but kind of good support of the junctions and, and transcript ends. And we think that um, you, know, you have to be cautious when you are just using only this data for annotating uh, the transcript terms of the genomes with, with, the, with, the transcript, with the transcript models. So, and in order to, to, to try to understand, okay, so what is the, then the best way that we can use this data to support uh, genome annotation? Uh, because, you know, the long reads alone, you know, without a reference annotation are kind of difficult to, to, to use for annotation. That's what we concluded from challenge three. It's difficult to annotate the transcript structure. And actually, of course, when you have one sample, you will not have a complete annotation. So I'm still in my lab, Alejandro started to work on, on, on the idea of, uh, of how to combine ab initio and long reads for genome annotation, ab initio models and long reads, right? So uh, this is what is called as uh, evidence-driven annotation. And the question that we wanted to answer is what is better to use the reads of the transcript models generated by a tool? And whether another question is whether uh, long reads are better than short reads? We actually try to uh, uh, address the first and not the second question yet. Um, so I will skip this slide because I think that I can go directly to this one. So what we did is take the long reads. Um, this was with the human data sets. And then uh, the Pagbio data we analyzed with the ISO 63 pipeline, the nanopore data, and in combination with Pagbio and a mix, we analyzed with FLARE and did some scanning analysis or filtering. So we selected a number of transcripts, which we collapsed into kind of uh, uh, reliable genes of, 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 of gene structures. And then these were used as uh, you know, evidence to support you know, these uh, 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 combined predictions using Augustus as a, as, a, as a predictor. And then we compare to the actual reference of the human. So what we uh, what we saw here is that actually the reads right here and here for the three type of data were not really the best choice uh, to use with the initial methods to uh, to obtain good sensitivity and prediction. Were the actually the transcripts models in general that were better? Uh, uh, here you can see a little bit the difference between only using ab initio of this evidence driven. So in general, I mean, the sensitivity at the nucleotide level is a little bit different, but in general, all the other metrics were improved when we put, you know, the long reads data on top, uh, on top of the ab initio uh, predictions. And uh, in general, the identity of those methods of these uh, uh, models that were supported by the evidence uh, were better to the um, uh, to the reference that and those that were not. Uh, we use that also to annot annotate the manatee genome, uh, which is very challenging because you know the samples were not of really high quality, and the, the genome is also kind of uh, not uh, uh, totally complete. And again, we saw that uh, our evidence-driven uh, approach, in which we combine the transcript models with the with the uh, ab initio methods, give us the the highest number of uh, complete and single copy uh, um, um, boost code genes. Uh, and this is just an example of one of the uh, of the genes, the hemoglobin subunit alpha, one of the manatee that in the published data was really incomplete, right? This is for the related species, and then with this data, we kind of uh, were able to, to reconstruct properly. So this is just a, a small project, but we think that, you know, uh, it's, it's great to use the long reads uh, for this uh, evidence-driven prediction, but I think that uh, actually using transcript models rather than, rather than reads is better results. Uh, and now we are working on improving the annotation of uh, the, the manatee genome. And with that, I will 
finish my presentation. This is uh, the acknowledgement slides of the uh, longer gas evaluation team. Most of the work presented here was performed by Fran uh, Abaru, which who was a PhD student in my lab. This is the consortium uh, that was led by uh, Angela Brooks and myself, and also Ali Mortazavi. Gloria was involved in the experimental validation. Kim Fei did challenge too. I have not talked about this. Adam Francis from Gene Code was doing these predictions, and Mark will help quite a lot in, in, in all the logistics. And these are the labs who contributed to the challenge. And thank you very much for your attention.